The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweigh the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today... Thank you, Mr. Rice. Mr. McLaughlin, before you argue in response, corollary to the question I just asked Mr. Reisner, if I were denied Rule 59 and Rule 60 relief, rule on the attorney's fees, this case would be over. Correct. Okay. Mr. Reisner's client could file another lawsuit seeking these very same categories of documents uh, the day after I issued that ruling, could she not? I think that's true. And she could identify all of these same things, and she could go out and take depositions of the very same people she wished to do. Yes, she could, Your Honor. Okay. So what? What's? Why should I? Why should that course be employed? Because that's what the law requires. Okay. And quick, short, short answer. And and I'll. Would I want? Would the conduct of the of the city? the conduct of the city in this lawsuit be relevant for purposes such as attorney's fees in that lawsuit? It's a good question, Your Honor, because the, the dilemma the plaintiff is going to have, she's going to have two dilemmas. One is we've, we, we believe, I'm not going to say we, we believe we've given all the records because we're, we have a request from her that I'm about to show you that we're still working to see if there are things that we haven't found. We've made as good faith an effort as we possibly can to find records. We believe that we've given all the records that there are. She, they're, they're making these sweeping statements about um, agendas and notes. And I keep asking people that are involved in these meetings, and these are internal staff meetings. These are not open meeting law meetings. These are, if, if you and I were to sit down on a day to talk about something, uh, we'd have a meeting, and they all say, we don't do agendas. And no, I didn't take any notes from that meeting. We were all aware of the issues, and we talked about them, and there were no, issue, no, no uh, notes. We can only give records. We can't explain to plaintiff everything she wants to know about what happened a year ago. Or, I mean, we could try. We, we'll make a good faith effort. But that's not the point of a public records action. And can I show you Exhibit G and tell you the background of this? Because it's, what it's, is Exhibit G? Exhibit G is, I, let me back up. Your Honor suggested, actually ordered, that Mr. Reiser and I get together to discuss items. Well, I went a step further and I said, Bill, bring your client, and he brought Ms. Cruz and he brought Ms. Pacheco on February 6th, and we sat around, there was Mike Rankin, Chris Casalimus, there were IT representatives, I can't remember who all was there. But we, I had people there that I thought were going to be able to answer, answer any questions they had or try to help figure out what, what they think we have that we haven't given them. So we talked very constructive. We said, give us a list of what you think we haven't given you. And you have that list if you want to look at Mr. Reisner's reply, I believe it's regarding the 5960 motion. There's an exhibit one in there. Yeah. That's a listing of what they say we haven't given them or questions they have. That came out of the February 6th meeting. And let me tell you a little more. I asked Mr. Reisner, I think it was that night, Bill, get us that list and we'll get going on it. And about a week later, I sent him an email. Or I don't remember if it was a week later, but within two weeks. I said, Bill, I haven't got that list. I'd like you to get me that list. I never get a list from Mr. Reisner or Ms. Cruz informally. I get the list as exhibit one to their reply. So we're 
to your point, and I'm going to return to this, we don't need a new trial to try to get records for them. We don't need her to file a new action either. We just need her to be keep talking to us so we can try to get answers for her. So another answer I would make to your question about what, what's to stop her, nothing's to stop her. But we're trying to get her answers without her ever having to file another action and without having to have a new trial, which the law does not really permit under these circumstances, as I'll get to. Well, I can, I, I read the briefing, and, I, and rightly or wrongly, I think I can wade through issues related to Rule 59 and Rule 60. I have no doubt. I'm more interested in, in discussing some of these procedural aspects, but, but go ahead. Sure. So, so we get, I, I believe, am I identifying it right? Exhibit one to the reply in so on the 5960. It begins, I believe, with. It's, it's had it updated at the top, and it says review of missing documents for GCU slash El Rio PRR on okay. February 2014. Great. So, um, May I approach the bench, Your Honor? You mm -hmm. This is exhibit, I had it marked as exhibit G. This is my initial response. Thank you. This is a letter I sent her Friday. I asked Bill and I asked Bill and I asked his you know, please get me this. He gets me it March 4th with his reply, so I lose a month which is why I have to file it on the 21st, because I could have filed it maybe February 21st if he'd sent it to me a month ago. And basically, I want to go through a few of the examples that they have and, and what, we're, what we're talking about here. First of all, it's interesting because we asked them for a list of what they felt was missing. And they gave us exhibit one to the reply. And Mr. Reisner stands up here and tells you about all these other things that are allegedly missing or that they don't have. None of them are listed in exhibit one. We, we're trying to, look to respond to exhibit one, which is from Ms. Cruz and Ms. Pacheco. So let's just go through a few examples. Item one, 1A. They wanted to know who was invited to a TRIO meeting January 23rd. We had our IT department go through, go through the metadata, get them the list of persons. We won't have who actually responded because those are TRIO records, not city records. TRIO set up that meeting. So that's one kind of question we're getting that we're trying to respond to. And we don't need a new trial and we don't need a new action. We just need plaintiff to cooperate with us, which I think she's trying to do some of the time. If, if Mr. Reisner weren't trying to constantly insinuate himself back into the process, and we in turn want to cooperate with her and get her the information. So that's the third option, is let's just keep talking. We had a 90 minute meeting on the 6th, and I'd like to keep talking. So let's look at a, a couple other items. Um, they wanted certain attachments that they felt were missing. We'd already given them the attachments, but they didn't know they were attachments. Because of the way our system does it, you don't always have the attachment immediately with the email. So for instance, item four. And we've given her the attachment, and it's the same meeting notice that we released to her five months ago. Item seven, they wanted to know, they had, they had questions about how Sarah Murley did her applied economics report. That's not really a public records question. They were saying, well, how did she calculate these things? Well, I emailed Sarah Murley, and attachment five is what she sent me, which I immediately turned over to Ms. Cruz on Friday, 
and she explains how she calculated these things. And I don't want to I don't want to bore you and we don't have to go through all of these, but go to the last last four items, the last page of the letter. We're we've given them the list of invitees, for instance, under second item 18. They didn't have an item 9, and then they had two item 18s and two item 19s. And then we have first item 19. We say, well, this. So they say, what was the attachment that's missing? We and effectively we're saying, no, it's not. The attachment is attached, but it was one of the Maria Sella Solis emails released to you on December 6th. Second item 19. What missing attachment allegedly? No, it's the same meeting notice from Rebecca Way that was released to you. We can clarify these items, and we're willing to. We've released 2,700 records. They have, according to Mr. Reisner, and I'll get to this, his action was brought about our withholding our offer to Grand Canyon. Now, he's had our offer to Grand Canyon since you ordered it released on August 16th, and we gave it to them on August 23rd. My point is simply this. I want to cooperate. I don't want there to have to be a new trial, and I don't want there to have to be another lawsuit. God knows, I least of all. I would like to cooperate on this. I think Your Honor has hit the nail on the head. You become the endless referee of a record search. Let's just talk and do a record, you know, keep up with the record search. We think we've given a lot, you know, the key things. There may be things we're going to find, depending on what she, she asks, because I haven't finished with this. Uh, her uh, exhibit one to the reply, I'm still working on that. There's still a lot to answer. But we've, I would say, if you look through this, we've answered a third of their questions already. And I'm a little surprised that we had a meeting on the 6th where we said, tell us what you want. They eventually said it through Mr. Reisner in his reply. And now all of a sudden, he's got all these other things that he says, well, you didn't give us this and you didn't give us that. We don't think they exist. But if, if part of this is a systematic questioning of all these people to say, you know, I know you've told me you don't think you had records, but I'm really asking you, do you have any files? Did you have any agendas? Do you have any notes? I think they're going to say no, but I'm happy to do it. So I would, if you have questions of me on that, I'm delighted to answer them. Um, Mr. Reisner is in a time warp. He wants it to still be July of 2013. Well, it's not. We've released 2,700 documents, and we're willing to work with his client to get more, and we do not need either a new trial or another action to do it. So now let me get to the law, unless you have questions. No, go ahead. So, you, I'm sure you've read the statement of facts in our response, but I want to I want to go through and re-mention a couple of things, because um, Rule 59 and Rule 60 are very specific about what you can get relief for and when it's appropriate, and I I need to have these facts out there to properly discuss it, and I won't go through all of them. So. Plaintiff submits a public records request on May 13th. On May 24th, the city attorney's office releases certain documents, and we say in the cover letter, there are certain ones that we're not going to release. Best interests of the city, basically, we're in negotiation. And that they're also attorney-client privilege. Five days later, plaintiff files, plaintiff's counsel files a lawsuit. And if you read the lawsuit, the, the uh, paragraph 7 and 10 of the lawsuit and the request for the judgment, they direct it at the best interest of the state issue. And that's all they direct it at. In fact, I think if you read it, 
they don't actually ask for uh, documents to be released. They say, well, I want, I want my attorney to be paid and I want you to order this. I'm not positive of that. But whether they did or not, the issue they're talking about is the best interest of the state issue. Can we withhold documents on the basis, and you know the basis because you ruled on it. Now, we file an answer. We say four things. We say we've already provided certain material. We're going to be voluntarily providing you with more material when we find it, which we've been doing for the last, the, the last uh, release was December and the last major release was October. So we've, been, we've done it for months and the last major release was five months ago. And we, you're not going to need to, we didn't need to file a lawsuit. We're going to do that. And those are all voluntary releases. He's gotten exactly four documents out of this lawsuit. The rest have been voluntarily released. So let's, third thing we say, we're currently withholding certain materials for reasons we told you in, the, in our letter, May 24th letter, best interest of the state. And if and when it's no longer detrimental, we'll release it. So we make one supplemental release in June. You hold the uh, trial on the order to show cause on July 23rd. That all Mr. Reisner argues in that trial, and I, and I cited you the transcript portions, all he argues is the best interest of the state issue, the legal issue of whether we can withhold those. So you do an in-camera inspection, you rule, and you rule in her favor. You say, no, I'm sorry, un under these circumstances, I don't think you're enough in negotiation that you can do that. So I'm going to order you to release them. And I'm obviously paraphrasing, but I think that says the sense. We release those records to her one week later. We comply with the order. She's won the case, and we've complied with the order. And that's the only issue her attorney raised. You also rule that certain records are attorney-client privileged, and we don't have to release those. OK? 11 days after your ruling, Mr. Reisner files a motion for a new trial. And all he wants is a trial on attorney's fees. And let's listen to, let's listen to what he says in that motion. Because he wants, now he wants fees. And he wants, to, he wants to be sure that he substantially prevailed in the action. So what does he say? He, said, he confirms the narrow scoop of, scope of the lawsuit. He, this is what he says. Paragraph 7 of the complaint alleges as follows. On May 24, 2013, the defendants provided a few records, but refused to provide additional records related to negotiations of the sale of a city park on the grounds that such disclosure would significantly impair its effectiveness in the performance of its duties. The full letter is attached to this complaint as Exhibit C, except quoting our letter. Thus, the only, I'm, I italicize this because it's so important to get straight. This is Mr. Reisner talking now, 11 days after you rule. Thus, the only issue disputed by the plaintiff was the defendant's assertion that, quote, disclosure of withheld records would significantly impair, end quote, the city of Tucson's effectiveness in the performance of its duties. Then there's a, uh, some more text, and he says, the trial in its entirety focused on the defendant's refusal to provide the, its offer to Grand Canyon University. Now, later in the same motion, he makes still another admission that's factually fatal. He says, the, and I don't agree with this, but I'm going to read you verbatim because I'm going to live in his world for, for now. The court's ruling noted, there is no evidence that the city has acted frivolously or in bad faith in connection with this matter. Page 9 of the ruling. Actually, ample evidence does exist that the city acted in bad faith in connection with this matter. Such evidence was not introduced at the order to show cause hearing because it would have been irrelevant to the merits of that hearing. So he tries one narrow issue, 
and prime and before he wants to shift the focus to keep the case open, he considered evidence of alleged bad faith totally irrelevant to that issue. Now, as I say, we disagree with the fact the, the claim that there was somehow there was city bad faith, the fact that he's arguing that. But if we accept that, if it was ir irrelevant at the time of trial and, and that was his choice, whether he was right or wrong, he waived it. But if, it, if he was right then, why does it now entitle him to a new trial? And in 60C terms, if Let me you stop and ask a question, and that would be one of the plaintiff's arguments was that uh, I jumped the gun on the fee issue, mm -hmm. dealt with it in the original ruling, should have allowed him the 20 days, I believe, the rule requires provides for to file a fee application. The Ford versus, I think Ford is the plaintiff, correct, in the Democratic, Ford versus Democratic Party case, yes. says that one of the considerations a court can, can look at with regard to a fee application in a record search is whether there has been good faith efforts on behalf of the, of the entity that was the object of the search. Yes. Could he have raised, I mean, the argument you're making is he precluded in his, if, if I had allowed him the 20 days under the rule and he had raised the issue of bad faith by the city in his, in a written application for attorney's fees, would you be arguing that was irrelevant? He should have, or was precluded and he should have raised it in the trial? Yes, I would, for two reasons. Uh, one is um, the statute has been changed. It used to have bad faith in it, and they eliminated that. And I believe I cited you uh, actually in the... Um, Which statute? The records? Yes, 121.02B. It used to talk about arbitrary and capricious and in bad faith. And it's been changed to say substantial com substantially prevailed. Right. And my position is um, that... When they did that, both sides are precluded there. It's not an issue anymore, but you can't inject it as an issue either. You can't say, well, there was bad faith. And I, I need what to... What does Ford do with that? I dovetail it with Ford because Ford, the, our position, and I, I said this in our uh, pleading, our position is that under Ford, you're entitled to... Uh, take into account our cooperativeness or non-cooperativeness in releasing the records that are at issue. The records that are at issue here were records, the limited universe of records where we were negotiating with GCU and setting forth our position. So for instance, the manager's offer letter that you had uh, uh, looked at in camera, that would be one of the, one of the ones. And, and we say in the pleading as well, we weren't going to, on the facts as we knew them then, because you held the hearing on the 23rd of July, and ironically on the 28th, the um, GCU announces that they're going to go to Mesa. They're not going to Tucson. So they do a, pre a press release. But on the facts as we knew them, we were not going to give those documents out unless you ordered us to. So in that sense, we, we weren't going to cooperate. But once we knew your ruling, we gave them immediately. We another, fought. Question, another question would be, though, um, Ms. Cruz, and I'm look, not looking at it, but I have looked at it several times. Sure. Ms. Cruz's original request for documents was much broader than, than the offer sheets. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you all produced a number of documents beforehand, which you said. Um, so you're seeking to bind Ms. Cruz to the allegations in the lawsuit, but isn't she relying on the fact that she's gotten everything else that you have? Um, and that the only, when she says the only thing that's, that are at issue are the, are the best interest documents or the offer documents, isn't that because she's operating under the belief that you've already given her everything else? We're, we're, she's operating under the belief that we've either given her everything else or that we're going to, because when he, when Mr. Reisner writes his complaint, no, when he writes, I see him laughing over there. I, 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 and I really would, I just, both of you, I would prefer yeah. if we, we, whatever, 
whatever tension there is between the two of you, if we could leave it out of the courtroom, I'd appreciate it. His complaint did not rely on any statements we made in putting the, making this a narrow issue. She brought a lawsuit solely on the best interests of the state because that's what we said in our letter. And the assumption we've been operating on ever since and then that we said in our answer, paragraph seven is, as to anything that's not within that limited universe, we're going to give it to you. And we have given it to you. There are two things going on here. There's this narrow lawsuit that you ruled on in July. And then there's voluntary releases that we've made in May, June, August, September, October. As we find things, we should have been faster. We should have been more efficient. I don't like it either. And if I were you, I wouldn't be real happy with me either. But that is a different animal from the lawsuit. The lawsuit is a very narrow focused lawsuit due to Mr. Reisner writing it that way and taking that position throughout the lawsuit. Let me just digress one second. If he, he, every hearing he brings, he wants to bring up the fact of what we said when and all this stuff. Well, his motion claims that he knew about bad faith before he ever reached the hearing. And he didn't bring it up because it wasn't relevant. Well, I, I keep circling back to this. How then is it relevant now to him claiming, well, I need you to now reopen the case when that's not the issue I ever tried? I'm, I'm a little confused. And, and let, me, let me see if I understand this. Um, Ms. Cruz files or provides you with a letter saying, I'd like all these categories of documents. And, and I recall reading the letter that it is very broad and yes. encompasses a lot of things. Yes. You provide her with a certain amount of documentation. She files a lawsuit based on what you have not provided. And the position you're taking is, but we were planning to give her all of the rest anyway. And then over a period of time, a long period of time, uh, documents continue to appear or be produced. Um, I can't consider anything for bad faith purposes other than whether you acted in good faith, your client, this is not you, your client related to um, the documents related to best interest of the city. But I should consider the prolonged period of production over many months to be evidence of good faith on the part of the city? I don't think it's good faith or bad faith. I don't, I think, I think it's Ford that, that says just look at the documents that are at issue. And what we say is, we, we know there's this request, we're responding to the request. When we send things, it's to Ms. Cruz, not to her attorney. And we will just keep doing that as we find things. Yes, so it's, it's there's, there's a process that we're going through that like any other public records request, and then there's this lawsuit, which is about the best interest of the state. If, if, he, if they had filed a lawsuit and tried the lawsuit saying, we want the documents you're saying you are withheld, but we want everything else you've got that fits under her request, even though you say you've already given it to us, would that be an issue that's even right to try? Would I, would I be able to issue a ruling saying, oh, by the way, give them everything else that's responsive, even though you've already, even though I believe you, you've already given them everything else that's responsive? My short answer is no, although I, I would, it's, it's not the case we have in front of us. I'd have to consider that. That's a, that's a, that's a good question. I think, I think though that the answer would, would be no, absent some showing that we were uh, truly trying to hide documents or absolutely refusing to give documents that we didn't have any, any privilege or, or basis to not give. Maybe I can frame the question a little 
was better for my purpose, trying to figure it out for my purposes, and that would be, um, did she bring a lawsuit about the only documents that you said that you were withholding? I say yes, she did. That's what we say she did. And she can't now say, you know, I want to broaden this now that I've gotten the one ruling that I wanted. Okay, but then if it turns out that there were several thousand pages of documents that you were withholding in addition to the documents you say you were withholding, do you want to bind her with regard to finding of good faith efforts to the documents you were withholding? All I'm saying is that she can't get a new trial now to say, I need to reopen this so we look into that. Can I consider, frankly, there, there, there is so much, there's a lot of overlap right now. I know that Mr. Reisner said he wasn't going to present any testimony today about attorney's fees, except some of the things that, that he said Ms. Cruz were going to testify about, was going to, is going to testify about today, seemed relevant to the issue of attorney's fees. So. I guess the question is, can I consider the prolonged releases over time as evidence one way or another with regard to the issue of attorney's fees? And I, I think that under Ford, no, you can't. And also under Schweiger and Hensley, which say, the, the reason I say that is because Schweiger and Hensley say, she gets fees based on what she brought and won on. She doesn't get fees for claims she didn't bring. And there's a point we reach where, and I think very soon, where if you start considering all the other voluntary release, that effectively, at least for attorney's fees, we're starting to allow her to have new claims or get paid for claims that she never brought. Mr. McLaughlin, do you have anything else you want to argue on the 5960? Because I want to, I want to move forward. There's going to be testimony. I, I would say no, Your Honor, except that I do object to testimony on 5960 in the, because Mr. Reisner gave absolutely no notice of it, and it is not in your order. The, the, your order talked about testimony as to attorney's fees. Fine. But all of a sudden, instant evidentiary hearing on 5960, I had no notice. I'm not prepared. That's all I have to say. All right. Um.